Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Timmy Strata, and you're listening to MMALatestNews.com. It's time to roll, baby. Life has been weird for quite some time now. I've personally lost all recollection of time, and the vast majority of the population has been in a collective funk for what, a month now? Longer for some? It's crazy times we're living in. So firstly, I just want to say that I hope everybody out there is staying safe and getting through this thing with the least amount of pain and discomfort is humanly possible. As far as the world of mixed martial arts goes, well, despite there being no events, there's still plenty of drama. It's funny how it goes, isn't it? I feel like the whole UFC debacle happening when it did and how it did is symbolic of our beloved sport in many ways. Controversial plans with last minute changes to both the fight card itself, the location, and the drama everywhere in between and its eventual cancellation. It made for chaotic times and we came out on the other side without even getting an event. But as frustrating and as much of a letdown as the whole thing was in so many different ways, it was entertaining while it lasted. I definitely believe that the event shouldn't have happened given the circumstances, but to have UFC 249 take place after the whole world being shut down for so long now would have made for a very welcomed escape. An escape we're all desperately needing right now, but it wasn't meant to be. For me, I came away from this thing looking at the positive. I was hoping that this would mean, once order was restored, that we were finally going to get Khabib vs Ferguson and McGregor vs Gaethje. But, Turns out, the promotion has different plans. Dana White is sticking to his guns, and as he stated when this whole thing fell apart the first time, the UFC is going to be the very first sports organization out of the gate when this whole thing is passed. And although we are still in the thick of it as we speak, we've already got ourselves a date for 249, and it goes down on May 9th. What more can you say about this whole thing that hasn't been said a thousand times already? This situation we're dealing with is still so fluid, and we're still at a stage where it changes on an hourly basis. So it's kind of crazy to imagine that the promotion is still attempting to get something booked. But I certainly appreciate the effort. And the card they have lined up? Insanity. The plan is to have three title fights, starting with Amanda Nunes versus Felicia Spencer for the women's featherweight title, Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz for the bantamweight title, and Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje for the interim lightweight title. It's a lofty goal to say the least, but I don't mind saying that I believe in Dana White. A lot of fans and media like to dump all over him, as well as anybody that has anything to say about him that's not negative. But the reality is, he gets results. And even though this event is more than likely going to head toward some obstacles that we can't even imagine, I definitely think it's going to happen this time around. Not to nitpick because Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje is an outstanding fight, but a part of me just wanted to wait a little bit longer to see if we could finally get Khabib and Ferguson in there together. And almost even more so than that, I truly believe that the best fight for McGregor next is one versus Gaethje, for a number of reasons. It's the most dangerous fight McGregor could possibly take. I think it's a move that the fans would give him a lot of respect for, because Gaethje may not be the biggest name out of potential fights for him, but he is definitely the most dangerous. For McGregor to fight, Gaethje would be taking a big risk, and it's something that I think wouldn't be lost on the fans. Then there's also the fact that Gaethje rightfully earned the life-changing payday in a fight versus McGregor from the role that he's been on as of late. There's also the fact that stylistically it'd be incredible and destined for fireworks. Rumor has it that before the virus hit, this fight was close to being made, and I truly believe that once that fight got booked, that everybody would have quickly came to the realization that this is the fight that we all didn't know we wanted so bad. But again, it's not meant to be, at least not for right now. And as for Ferguson and Khabib, what can you even say at this point? In the lead up to the fight this time around, I always joked about how if it did in fact fall through for the fifth time in a row, that we would just simply book it for the sixth time. And if it fell apart for the sixth time in a row, we'd just book it again and again and again for as many times as we have to to finally make it happen. But to say I've cooled off on that concept right now would be an understatement. I know I'm speaking in the moment right now, and perhaps in two months' time when everything comes out in the wash, I'll feel different. But I think it's time to let go of Khabib vs. Ferguson. I'm as guilty as anybody for longing for this fight. I truly feel like these are the very best lightweights on the planet, and they're both in their primes. We have to see the outcome of what happens when these two get locked in a cage together. But it's almost like the universe is trying to tell us something. 
The whole saga has just become exhausting at this point, and as much as I feel like Khabib versus Ferguson keeps getting bigger and the ante keeps getting upped every time it gets booked, it's just not in the cards right now. So it's time to look forward to something new. And Ferguson vs. Gaethje is a good start. It's funny, as close as these two are in the rankings, the idea of them fighting each other never even occurred to me till this whole thing happened. So buckle up and get hype, because this fight is happening. It'll be on May 9th, and the circumstances surrounding it are chaotic. This contest taking place amidst complete pandemonium is quite fitting.